Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. I hope you're ready because we will start right now. We'll work on the, the vowels, les voyelles, in this lesson. And then we'll see uh, how uh, they behave when we combine them with uh, another letter. So the vowels that we will work on, we, we won't take this uh, Y vowel on purpose, okay? So we'll focus only on A. E, I, O, U. Okay, so remember one more time. A, E, I, O, U. Okay, remember this U is usually can be quite quite tricky uh, for um, English speaking persons, especially the the difference between the U and the Ooh, okay, but we'll see that a bit later. So if you combine this uh, vowel A with the vowel E, okay, you will get the sound A. So really open A, okay. And then if you combine it with the, the vowel U, then you will get the sound O. O. All right, so well, exactly the same sound as this O vowel here. So it's the same O, okay. And then if you combine it with the, the letter N, in that case, you will get what we call a nasal, so it goes in your uh, nose, and then you get the sound uh, uh, okay? Uh, if you listen carefully, well, basically, you don't, you don't listen or you don't hear, sorry, uh, any N in uh, my pronunciation. Uh, uh, okay? Let's see what happens with a. Uh. So, a uh, combined with the vowel E will give you the, the sound E. Eh. So, the same sound as we had previously here, okay? So, it's the same sound, and it's A, eh, so really open. And now, if you combine it with the U, you will get the sound U. Uh, U. Uh. And if you combine it with N, then you get the sound O. Uh. So, the same sound as we had when we combine N with A, uh, okay? O, uh, O. Uh. All right, so let's see now for E. So for E, obviously, if you get two, uh, two times the same letter, then it, it will be a, a bit longer. So E, okay, same thing for uh, U, it doesn't really happen. And then here, that's the interesting one. If you combine E with N, then you will get the sound uh, 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 okay, in your nose. Uh. All right, so let's see O now. If you combine O and E, you will get the sound wa 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 wa. So make it repeat it like that. You know wa 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 wa, and then after that only one wa. Okay. Then if you combine it with u, you will get the sound u. So as I said previously, the the, the difficulty one of the big difficulty for uh, English speaking uh, persons is this difference between the u here and the U here, U, U. Okay, so you will have the, the the time to to work on that, but still it's U in that case. If you combine it with N, then you will get the sound U. Same thing, nasal, so in your nose, U, U. All right, let's see the the last one. So if you combine U and E, you get the sound V, V, V. All right, so really, it's not U, okay, so it's U, 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 all right, and then, well, basically it doesn't exist, it's U, O, and if you combine it with a N, then you get the sound, uh. so before, we had the difference between this uh here and this uh here, but nowadays, in France, at least, you don't make any difference between the two, okay, so it's uh, here and uh, here. All right. So let's see them one more time. A, E, O, A, E, 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 A, E, E, O, O, U, O. U, U, I, U. Oh, we'll 
will discover les chiffres in this lesson. I hope you're ready because it's starting right now. Les chiffres. Zero. Zero. Okay, so remember, we get this z and then e accent aigu, z, ro. Okay? Then un. Alright, so when you combine this u and n, you get the nasal sound un, un. Deux. Final X not pronounced, okay? Deux. Trois. Final S not pronounced. Trois. Quatre. Quatre. Okay? So remember that even if you get this U vowel here, basically you don't pronounce it. Because that's the rule in French. When we get this Q letter and then a vowel after, then we will, we will have to put this U. Okay? So... You get this Q, U, A, but then the sound that you will pronounce is K. Okay? Quatre. Quatre. All right? And next, cinq. 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 And be careful here, because even if it's ending with this X, well, you'll have to pronounce it like S. S, -s, -s, -s. Okay? So you get the six pronunciation. Six. Six. Okay, so it's not six. It's six. All right? Then here, remember, P is not pronounced. Okay, it doesn't exist. So you get this set sound. Set. Set. Okay? And here, final T is pronounced. So, huit. Huit. Remember in French, this H letter here, okay, uh, doesn't exist phonetically, so we, we don't really pronounce it, okay, so if you listen carefully, you will only listen or hear these vowels at the beginning of the word, huit, huit, okay, and then neuf, 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 Okay, and we'll discover a quite useful thing because in leçon B, if you remember carefully, uh, I did introduce the the, the numbers uh, till uh, nine, and then we'll continue so from ten to twenty. Okay, the dix avant. Okay, so let's start now. Dix. Okay, so remember, final X here is pronounced like S. Dix. Dix. Okay, then onze. Onze. Okay, so O plus N give you the sound on, on, onze, onze. Okay, final E doesn't exist phonetically. Onze. Okay, douze, douze. O, U, the two together will give you the sound O. Okay, and then Z. Douze, douze. All right. Then now, if you combine this E and E, you get the sound E, really open. Tres. Tres. Final E, as usual, not pronounced. Tres. Tres. Okay? And here, quatorze. So, remember, Q and U here. Well, basically, you get to put this U vowel, because that's the rule in French. Even if you don't pronounce it, okay, so you will get the sound K here. K. Quatorze. Quatorze. Okay? Same thing here. U is, doesn't exist, so... Quinze. 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 Alright? I-N. Nasal. So it's... Un. Un. Quinze. Quinze. Okay? Then it continues, of course. Now you get this... Seize. Seize. Same thing. Final E doesn't exist. Seize. E uh, and E together, they give you the sound E, E, really open. Says, says, okay? Then it becomes <laughs> logical now, because if you look carefully, you've got this, this, okay? This, and then set. So if you remember this, it's here, it's 10, and then set, 7, okay? So it's clear. But then for the pronunciation, D set, okay? So you don't insist on the S. Dix-sept, 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 okay? Then, dix-huit, so you'll make this little 
link between the two, the liaison. 18, 18, 18. Okay? Then, 19, 19, 19. Okay? E, U, E, 9, 9, 9, 19. And the last one, so this G letter is here, but you don't pronounce it, okay? And then final T doesn't exist phonetically either. So basically, you will only need to pronounce these three letters. So you've got V, V, and then you've got nasal, I, N, un, V, 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 okay? Hi everyone, bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 2, Leçon D. So let's see what we'll discover together in this lesson. And we'll work on les adjectifs possessifs. So really useful. Um, well, in French, as usual, we will have the difference between masculin, masculine form. So for the masculine form, we'll have mon, mon, ton, ton. Son, son, notre, notre, votre, votre, leur, leur. Okay, so let's be clear, you know, when we talk about les adjectifs possessifs, in English it will be my, your, uh, his, uh, are, your, there. Okay, but then in French, well, basically, we'll, we'll have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural. And then keep in mind, we'll see that a bit later uh, when I will give you some examples, that in French, we don't decide whether it's masculine, feminine, or plural according to the subject, like in English, because in English, you put whether the masculine or the feminine according to the subject, but... We will, in French, put the masculine according to, or the feminine, or the plural, according to the word it is connected to. Okay? So, it's quite important to just remember that, because uh, it will basically, it will be really important for the, the decision whether you put the masculine, or the feminine, or the plural form. Okay? So, we saw first, down here, the masculine form. Let's check the feminine form. And it's ma. Ta, sa, okay, so you can see, well, well, of course differences, but then still, you know, it works like M, M, T, and then T, and S, S, okay, so, well, mon, masculine, ma, feminine form, ton, masculine form, ta, feminine form, son, masculine form, sa, Form. And then the good news is that notre is the same, votre is the same, and then leur is the same. Okay, so you don't really have a difference between these three persons. You will have to use the same adjective possessive. Okay, so the only difference is there. Mon, ton, son, ma, ta, sa. Okay, and now let's see the plural part here. Okay, so for the phonetical or pronunciation aspect of it, then remember that this ES here combined will give you the sound E. Okay, so you'll pronounce it like ME, ME, ME. Okay, TE. So logical, same pronunciation here, TE. SE. Alright, so ME, TE. Say. Okay? And then for the plural, no, vo, and then leur. Okay? So remember, even if you've got this final S, you don't pronounce it, as it was the case already for this word. No, you don't pronounce the final S. Vo, doesn't you don't pronounce it. Leur. Okay? So if we say that one more time, it's me, te, se, and then no, vo, leur. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. So for the masculine, 
mon père. Okay, so père means father. Okay, so father is masculine. And so you will put mon père. So you will put here the masculine adjective possessive, my father, just because father is masculine. Okay, so the, the, the subject, the person who is actually talking about his father or her father, doesn't really uh, affect the fact that you use the masculine or the feminine here. You put the masculine because father is masculine. Okay, so vélo, bicycle, if you want to say my bicycle, you will say mon vélo. Okay, just because vélo is masculine. Un vélo and then mon vélo. All right, let's see now a few or two examples for the feminine. Uh, mother, mother is feminine, and then you will have ma mère. Ma mère, my mother, ma mère. Okay, here you get voiture, voiture means car, a car, okay, and it's feminine, so une voiture. Same thing here, you will put the feminine form, ma voiture. Ma voiture. Okay, and let's see now for the plural. So, parents, parents. Mes parents. Okay, because it's the plural form here. Okay, so you get the plural form here as well. Mes parents. Okay, and then ami, friends. Okay, it's the plural form, so it's mes ami. Okay, and then let's be purist and make uh, this beautiful liaison between these two words. Mes amis, mes amis, mes amis. All right. So I hope it's clear. Because of course, as usual in French, we've got some exceptions, and the exceptions are for the feminine words, like identité, for instance. Identité. So it does mean identity. Okay. Um, if you look carefully. At this word you can notice that it is starting with a vowel so e in that case okay and then for aesthetical reasons we think that ma identité so the way that normally you should uh, you should put uh, the feminine form so ma identité doesn't sound nice so for that reason we put the masculine adjective possessive so remember with the words feminine words that start with a vowel like e here identité you will have to use les adjectifs possessifs masculin so the masculine form so it goes like mon identité mon identité so my identity mon identité mon identité okay another Example, adresse, so same thing here, adresse is a feminine word, but then it starts with a, okay? Same thing, you will have to use adjective possessive, masculin. Mon adresse, mon adresse, my address, mon adresse, mon adresse, okay? You can hear now this little link, so you get to pronounce this N. Mon adresse, mon adresse, okay? And the last one I, I took, same thing, opposition, opposition, well, basically, feminine, but then it starts with the O, mon opposition, mon opposition, you make this link, hein? mon opposition, mon opposition, so let's repeat it one more time, mon identité, mon adresse, mon opposition, okay, I hope Everything was okay with you. Uh, so it was Leçon D. Okay, so remember to check for the next lesson and the previous lessons there, here. And then you get, of course, more material at the following website, www.imagier.net. Okay, bye-bye. Work on les pronoms toniques. So they're useful and Normally, we tend to introduce them quite fast in French because you will have to use them. Les pronoms toniques. So, if you remem remember, we saw les pronoms personnels. Les pronoms personnels like je, I, tu, you, etc., etc. Okay? But then in that case, when you want to use this pronom tonique, normally, uh, you want to insist. 
okay and then you want to use this moi form so moi is me so that's the main difference between moi me and then je i because je normally you will use that to construct a sentence as a subject okay normally this moi is not a subject so it's not possible to put that right before a verb it would be a mistake okay moi so it's me moi so remember this o e combination give you the sound wa 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 moi okay and then you get toi toi for the masculine form we get lui 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 okay and for the feminine form we get elle elle so you can notice that well basically for the masculine it does change because uh, pronoun personnel is il okay and in that case pronoun tonique is lui all right but then for the feminine form it's the same so it's elle okay and then good news same thing for the plural nous vous okay so they don't change you get nous and then you get vous as for the pronoun personnel and same thing here for the plural form uh, third person of the plural so the masculine form will change and you get the sound e remember final x not pronounced e e and then plural l l okay so let's see them one more time moi toi lui elle nous vous eux elle okay so i did prepare a few examples so the first one moi j'aime le tennis okay so here you can see that you start the sentence with moi okay so me okay and then you have to put pronoun personnel je okay so in that case you take the e away because the verb is starting with a vowel okay but then j'aime so this j'aime form i like or then i love okay le tennis moi j'aime le tennis so basically if you start with moi here you want to insist on the fact that you really like uh, or you really love tennis okay let's see the second example toi tu préfères le golf okay préférer to prefer obviously okay toi tu préfères le golf toi tu préfères le golf okay and then here so we get here the masculine form and here we've got the feminine form so let's see the masculine form first lui il adore le foot lui il adore le foot okay so here lui pronoun tonique and then il pronoun personnel adorer to adore le foot we're talking about football here okay elle elle déteste détester means to hate okay le basket and we're talking about basketball here basket okay elle elle déteste le basket okay so even if you see them twice i mean you've got this l l okay then remember that in that case basically you want to insist really so you put first pronoun tonique it does look the same as pronoun personnel here but still you get two different pronouns here pronoun tonique and then pronoun personnel elle elle déteste le basket okay same thing here nous nous aimons bien la box okay so the difference between aimer here like i love okay and aimer bien normally when you put this bien after aimer well it's because you want to insist on the fact that you like you don't love something you like it okay nous nous aimons bien la box all right next example vous 
Vous détestez la natation. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Natation is coming from nager, nager to swim, ok? And the natation is the substantive form. Vous, vous détestez la natation. And then the two last examples. So first the masculine here, and then the feminine here. So let's see the masculine form. E, so if you remember, it was E, pronom tonique. Il préfère, so préféré, to prefer, and then you can see that it's here, the plural form. Il préfère la marche. La marche is coming from the verb marcher, marcher to walk, okay? La marche. E, il préfère la marche. And then the feminine example. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Okay, let's read them one more time. Moi, j'aime le tennis. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Lui, il adore le foot. Elle, elle déteste le basket. Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Eux, ils préfèrent la marche. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Work on the questions, so les questions, and especially the little words that you will have to use or to put at the beginning of your questions. And the first example that we can see is quand. Quand means when, okay? So let's see two examples. So if you start a question with quand, like in the first example here, quand arrivez-vous, okay? Arrivez is to arrive, okay? So vous, second person of the plural, you can use that for a group of person or then you can use that for one person and that's the polite way to, um, to use. Um, quand arrivez-vous? And now you can see that we've been changing the order. So normally, of course, the subject is before the verb. Okay, but then the correct way to make a question, if you start with this quand, is to change the order. So first you put the verb, then you put this pronoun personnel. Okay? Quand arrivez-vous? Alright? And then the rule is like, in French, you get to raise a little bit your voice at the end of a question. Of a question. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? Okay? You make this little link between the two. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? All right. And then, well, when we talk, then we, we normally uh, have this option to, to drop this uh, rule. So not to use this rule. So just to put the first, the, the verb, and then the subject after. And uh, we tend to add this s -que form here. s -que, okay? So and you'll get this, this question. So quand est-ce que vous arrivez. It is exactly the same question, okay? It is quite long if you compare it to the first one. Uh, it is more spoken, okay? It is less formal, and that's normally what you'll hear if you talk with French people. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Okay, and then here you see that because you've been using this esque form, then you keep the normal order. So, first the subject, vous, and then the verb, okay? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? All right, and then don't be afraid to raise your voice a little bit at the end. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? You see? So, it's not really the opera. You, you, you don't need to, to, to go really high, you know, but it's just a little bit. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? That's it. And the next one is où. Où means where. Where. Okay, so quand, when, remember, où, where. Two examples. Same rule, okay, so the formal or the classic way if you want to ask a question with où would be to change the order. So first the verb, then the subject here. Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? Habitez to live. So 
say leave like if you're talking about the place where you are living, okay? Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? And then same possibility, you just add this s -que, and then you keep the normal order of the sentence, so subject and verb. Où est-ce que vous habitez? Où est-ce que vous habitez? All right. Next. Pourquoi? Pourquoi is very really useful because it's why. Okay, so remember, quand, when, où, where, pourquoi, why. Same thing here, okay, pourquoi, you should change the order. Okay, so first the verb and then the subject. That's the correct or formal or classic way of asking a question. Pourquoi venez-vous? Venir is to come. So why do you come? Pourquoi venez-vous? Pourquoi venez-vous? All right, same rule here if you want to add this s -que, then you just keep the you just keep the, the, the classic order like subject and verb. Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Okay. And then comment comment is how? How? Comment venez-vous? How do you come? Comment venez-vous? Comment venez-vous? Comment Est-ce que vous venez? Comment est-ce que vous venez? And then the last one. Combien? How much? How many? So in French we use this combien, how much or how many. Combien de sucre? Sucre means sugar. And then voulez-vous? Okay, vouloir, to want. Okay, so how many sugar do, do you want? Combien de sucre voulez-vous? Combien de sucre voulez-vous? Combien de sucre voulez-vous? And then same thing here, just add this S que. Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? All right, discover together le verbe faire, so the verb to do. Okay, so faire, faire is uh, really useful because we tend to use it uh, quite much in French. Okay, so it's, well, usually quite important to discover this verb at the right beginning. So the verb faire. Je fais. Je fais. Remember final S not pronounced. Je fais. Tu fais. Same rule here. Final S not pronounced. Tu fais. Il, masculin, and then L, féminin, fait. Final T not pronounced. Il Elle fait. So if we take one second, actually you can see that here, here, and here, you get the same phonetical form. So the same form that you will pronounce. Okay, so you get je fais, tu fais, il fait, and then elle fait. It's the same. Okay? Then, nous. So it's quite strange because French people tend to pronounce faisons. Okay? So like here, this a e is not pronounced like normally we should pronounce it like a, but then like a. Uh, okay, nous faisons, nous faisons. Okay, and then this one is a bit tricky, so you will have to remember that. And it's quite funny because many French people tend to make the mistake and tend to to say vous faisiez. Okay, uh, but then no, 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 <laughs> it's vous faites. Vous faites. Okay, so remember a final S here is not pronounced and then this E is not pronounced either. So, fait, fait. Vous fait. And il, plural. Fon, final T not pronounced. Fon, fon. Elle, fon. Okay, so I will repeat the whole thing one more time. Je fais. Tu fais. Il fait. Elle fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. We'll discover la forme négative. So if you want to say that you are not blah blah blah, doing something or... So the negative form in French. And so the negative form in French is composed of two elements. The first one is ne. And then... You get your verb, and right after your verb, 
you will have to put this pa. Okay, so first n, then the verb, and after that pa. Okay, we write it P-A-S, okay, but as usual, final S is not pronounced, so it's pa. Okay, remember one thing, in some cases, we will have verbs starting whether with a vowel or then with H, 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 plus a vowel, and in French, H is not pronounced, okay, so for these verbs, E uh, will have to disappear, and it will be written like that, N. Mm. Okay, then will come the verb, and after that, doesn't change, it will be pas. Alright, so let's see a few examples now. So for ne, pas. So if you get a sentence like, il parle avec moi. So, il parle, he is talking, avec, with, moi, me. Okay, remember this moi. Uh, we introduced that uh, in this unit and it was a pronoun tonique, okay? Il parle avec moi. So if you want to put the negative form of this sentence, so remember, first part ne, so before the verb, then you put your verb, parle, basically you don't change it, just put it there, parle, and after that you put the second part, pas, okay? Then you get the sentence, il ne Parle pas avec moi. And that's it. You've got your negative sentence here. Okay? Let's see now how it will go with an apostrophe pas. Okay? So, nous allons en France. Okay? So, in that case, if you look, you've got the verb aller. Aller means to go. Okay? Nous allons. Nous allons. We are going, okay, en France, to France. Here, first letter is A. Okay, remember the rule. If it's not with a vowel, like here, it is the case, you will have to drop and take away this A form. So that's the reason why we've got this N apostrophe like that. Nalon. Nous nalon. And then you don't really need to think. You just put this PA after the verb, en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. And that's it. Okay, second example here. It's with the verb habiter. Habiter is to live. You know, when you, you introduce the place where you, where you live. Okay, and then here, I took this example or this verb just because, of course, it's starting with H, but as I said, you don't pronounce it. So the first sound you hear here is the vowel. And that's enough just to drop and to take away this E. Uh, so you will basically make it like in this example. You will put this N apostrophe. Elle n'habite pas dans cette maison. So elle habite, she lives or she is living dans in this house. Elle habite dans cette maison. And then neg negative form. Elle n'habite pas. Dans cette maison. This lesson will work on les adjectifs démonstratifs. So les adjectifs démonstratifs, in English it would be this or these, okay? But then as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine and the plural, okay? So we'll see that. So for the masculine form, it will be ce, ce, and then it will be Set. Set. Okay? So, as usual in French, remember, it can be tricky if a letter, uh, sorry, uh, um, an adjective like that, for instance, is ending, or it could be an article, is ending with a. Okay? Just because for some words starting with a vowel or with ash plus a vowel, then we will have to modify it, okay? And that's the reason why here we've got set, okay? But then it's still the masculine form, se, set. For the feminine, it will be set, so only one, set. And then for the plural form, it will be se, okay? So let's see that again, se, 
and then set feminin set so you can notice that phonetically these two are pronounced the same way okay set here and then set here and for the plural say say really open this a eh, a eh, say okay so let's see a few examples now the first one so i did take this train train is train okay so it's masculine so it's not with d so no problem you will put this ce train ce train okay it will be translated like this train ce train okay here you've got ordinateur so ordinateur a computer okay and it's masculine un ordinateur okay but if you if you look carefully it's not with o okay so vowel and then you will have to take this set form so the masculine form but the one that will use with the words that start with vowels or then h plus voyelle okay so set ordinateur this computer set ordinateur okay and then here we've got the word Um, man, okay, but then it starts with H, as in French, H is not pronounced, so the first sound that we hear is O, okay, and then it will follow the same rule, you'll have to use the masculine adjective demonstrative, but this form, cet homme, cet homme, all right, femme, woman, cette femme, this woman, Cette femme, cette femme, okay, and then the last one, personne, persons, pluriel, ces personnes, ces personnes, okay, so let's repeat them one more time, ce train, cet ordinateur, cet homme, cette femme, Ces personnes. In this lesson, and we'll work on uh, the way to conjugate uh, les verbes réguliers, so the regular verbs of the first group, okay, and then with er, so let's start now. So let's take an example. The example is parler, parler is to speak or to talk, okay, and then if you have a look at it like that, you can basically divide this verb in two parts. The first part, parle, and then second part, er, so it does mean that this verb ending with er is belonging to the first group of verbs in french we've got three groups okay the two first are uh, regular and the last one the third one is uh, irregular so this is one verb ending with er it does mean that it belongs to the the first group and it won't be tricky or so difficult to conjugate so we'll see together how to conjugate this verb the first person like je here so you will put this parle again so remember and after that you just put the ending e uh. and then the way to pronounce it is je parle parle so remember we put it okay but then we don't really pronounce it je parle okay then for two you will have to put a s okay phonetically tu parles so you've got the two first forms you pronounce them the same way you write them differently of course because you get a uh, here and then you've got a uh, and s okay but then phonetically they are the same je parle tu parles okay so let's see what you'll get for il and elle and well as you see you get il parle elle parle so it's the same form here so if you really want to only only speak and only use orally the, the, the language, well, it's, it's quite easy to conjugate these verbs. Je parle, tu parles, il parle, elle parle. Okay? For nous, okay, we'll have, well, let's say the classical ending for nous, and it will be O-N-S. Classical, because you, you will see that with the other groups as well, it's quite common to have this O-N-S for nous. Okay? Nous parlons. Okay, remember final S is not pronounced, okay? And then this O and together, they will give you the sound on, on, okay? Nous parlons, nous parlons, all right? Let's see now for vous, vous parlez, okay? Remember a Z, when you combine them together, you get the sound E, vous parlez, 
all right and the last one so even if you've got this EMT, <laughs> don't hate me but you won't pronounce these letters okay you have to write them for the plural form but you don't pronounce them so you get il parle elle parle so the good news is that you get here je parle tu parles il elle parle and then if you check it here il elle parle so it's the same phonetical pronunciation or phonetical form sorry okay and then you get nous parlons and then vous parlez all right so here remember the endings you will have to write them okay all right so we'll take another example regarder is to watch okay so you can see that the verb is ending with a air okay so you take it you just take this a air away and then you keep this radical form like we say in, in french only this form okay so you will get je regarde tu regardes il regarde elle regarde nous regardons vous regardez il regarde elle regarde okay so one more time here regarde 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 and then regarde so phonetically only one form here and then regardons regardez all right remember that even if this beautiful verb aller that we tend to use quite often because it means to go okay even if it ends with a air it is not regular at in this lesson we will count together yeah so from 20 uh, to 50 de 20 à 50 i hope you're ready because it's starting right now 20 21 okay so remember to make this little link 21 21 22 22 23 23 24 24 25 25 26 26 so remember it's ending with x but then we pronounce it 26 27 remember set it was this p disappear you don't pronounce it 27 28 so here you make the, the liaison 28 28 29 29 29 Then here, remember this E uh, N uh, uh, 30 30 30 Okay, don't insist on the E, uh, it doesn't exist here 30 31 31 31 32 32 33 33 Remember final S doesn't exist 33 34 34 34 Remember in French the rule is that you, if you start with well if you get this combination Q U A well you will pronounce it K K Same thing for the other vowels okay so because that's the rule after Q normally we put U and then an another vowel but then this U well basically it's not pronounced okay so K 34 35 35 36 36 37 37 38 38 39 39 
40. Okay, so same rule as previously, as for 4, okay? K, 40. 40. Okay? 41. 41. 42. 42. 43. 43. 44. 44. 45. 45. 46. 46. 47. 47. 48. 48. 49. 49. 50. 50. Same thing here. Okay, remember that you get this Q, U, but then you don't pronounce the U. And then you get the nasal. Un, and then en. 50. 50. Okay? We'll discover together le verbe venir. Venir means to come. Okay, to come, so it's quite useful. And then you will have to use it uh, quite often in French. So let's see how you conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay, because this verb is not regular. Just wanted to tell you first, okay? So the first form is je viens. Je viens. Okay, remember this i, 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 viens, viens, and then this nasal. Final S not pronounced. Je viens. Tu viens. So it's the same form, okay? Tu viens. Il, elle, vient. Final T not pronounced. Il vient. Elle vient. So if we take one second just to have a look at the je, tu, il, elle forms, they are phonetically the same. Viens, viens, viens. Okay, you write the S, S, T, but then you pronounce these forms the same way, okay? For nous, it will be different, because nous is here. Nous venons, okay? O, N, S, classical ending for nous, okay? Final S, not pronounced, so O, N, on, venons, venons, nous venons, nous venons. Okay, and then vous venez. Remember a Z combined like that? E venez, venez. Vous venez. Okay, and then the last form. So remember here, it's quite interesting because we've got this a vowel here, and then we've got a double N after. Okay, and the rule in French is that when you get this a and a double vowel after, you will have to pronounce this a like e. A, all right. So, V N V N V N V N. Okay. Il vient. Elle vient. Il vient. Elle vient. All right. E N T. You don't pronounce them. Il vient. Elle vient. All right. So, je viens. Tu viens. Il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. Alright, this lesson will work on vocabulary and then the, the vocabulary connected to uh, la famille, so, so the, the, the family, la famille. And then we'll start with uh, the grandparents. Les grands-parents, les grands-parents. Remember, you don't pronounce this final S. Here, grand-parent, okay. So, le grand-père, grandfather, le grand-père. Remember, e accent grave like that. It's uh, this open e. Pe, pe. Le grand-père. Le grand-père. And then the feminine form, grandmother, la grand-mère. La grand-mère. Okay, so, les grands-parents, le grand-père. La grand-mère, okay? So, let's see now the parents. Les parents, les parents. Le père, the father, le père. 
Et la mère, the mother, la mère. Ok, so, les parents, the parents, le père, la mère. Alright, so till now, I think that it's not really, really difficult to remember. Ok, let's see now. Les enfants, ok. So first, I don't make the liaison. Les enfants, just for you to see that we've got this en, and then we've got this en as well. Same pronunciation here. Enfant. Don't pronounce the T, don't, you don't pronounce the S. Enfant, ok. And now we can focus on the liaison here. So you should make the little link. Les enfants. Les enfants. Ok? Enfants, children. Les enfants, the children. So let's see. Uh, it will be the masculine form, so the son, ok? So it's le, and then even if it. You've got this L, well, basically you don't pronounce it, and then strangely you pronounce the final S. Le fils. Le fils. Le fils. Le fils. And then the feminine form, the daughter. La. Fille. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this L, L here and E uh, will give you the sound Y. La fille. La fille. Okay, so make the difference between the masculine form Le fils and then the feminine form La fille. Okay, so les enfants, le fils, la fille. Okay, and then the grandchildren, but then in French we use the Petit, petit is like small, okay, so les petits enfants, make this liaison here, petits en, petits en, okay, les petits enfants, les petits enfants, so grandson would be in French, petit fils, okay, so le petit fils, le petit fils, and then the feminine form, la petite. <laughs> I insist because here it's t, t, okay? So really you need to make the difference between the masculine form petit and then the feminine form petite, t, okay? So la petite fille, la petite fille. So let's repeat them. Les petits enfants, le petit fils, la petite fille, okay? And then, when you're talking about your uh, in-law uh, family, well, in, in French, we use this beau and belle. So, uh, it's beautiful, okay? So, the beautiful family, you're talking about your in-laws, okay? So, la belle famille. La belle famille. Remember, E-L-E-L-L-E-I-I. -E -E la belle famille, okay? So... Uh, père, okay, father, so father-in-law, okay, in French it's le beau-père, the beautiful father, <laughs> le beau-père. So remember this e, a, u combination of vowels only give you the sound o, beau, beau, okay, le beau-père. Mother-in-law, la belle-mère. La belle mère, la belle mère, ok, so let's see them one more time. La belle famille, le beau père, la belle mère, alright. And then brother in law, le beau frère, le beau frère, le beau frère, so frère is brother, ok, and then feminine form, here you get. Sœur, ok? So, sister-in-law, la belle, so we put the belle form here because it's the feminine form. Sœur, la belle sœur, la belle sœur. And in this lesson, we'll discover the questions uh, in which you will find qui, que, or then quoi, ok? So, let's discover now qui, ok? Qui means who, ok? So, if you want to ask a question regarding someone, like in these two examples, so the first one, who is he? Qui est il? Okay, so remember the formal, the normal way when we start a question with 
key or then as we saw in the previous previous lessons okay you will have to change the order and to put your subject il he here after the verb qui est il and then you make the liaison qui est-il who is he qui est-il qui est-il or then let's see a little example here qui vient vient is venir uh, vient is venir, yeah, is to come, sorry. <laughs> so, qui vient, who is coming, avec toi, with you, ce soir, this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, who is coming with you this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, okay? Um, if you pronounce them normally remember that you will have to raise your voice a little bit at the end of the question so let's pronounce them the normal way qui est-il qui vient avec toi ce soir qui vient avec toi ce soir okay second one is que so qui who que what what okay and then we'll see two examples here que fais tu Okay, fait is coming from faire, faire means to do, okay, que fais-tu, so what are you doing, what do you do, okay, que fais-tu, same thing here, remember, que, so you start a question with que, then you get to change the order, you get to put the subject after the verb, okay, que fais-tu, and it's a question, que fais-tu, que fais-tu, okay, and here, Que veux-tu? So, veux is coming from vouloir, vouloir, to want. Que veux-tu? What do you want? Okay, que veux-tu? Regarder, regarder is to watch. À la télévision. Well, at the television. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. So, let's read it normally now. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. Okay, so you can hear that I've been raising a little bit my voice at the end. And then the other option is quoi. So quoi means what as well. So you will tell me, oh, you get two what here. You get que and quoi. Yeah, for a good reason. Look at that. Well, tu fais quoi. So uh, I've been just taking the same question as we had here. This Que fais-tu? What do you do? What are you doing? Okay, but then if you're using this quoi, then it does mean that you don't start the question with it. You just put it here, for example, at the end. Okay, tu fais quoi? It is exactly the same meaning as this question, okay? But then you can see that you just keep the normal order of the sentence subject verb okay in that case you definitely need to raise your voice at the end okay tu fais quoi tu fais quoi and then i took the same example as we had here okay tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision okay so let's raise the voice at the end to make it clear that it's a question tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision tu veux regarder quoi À la télévision. Ok, so let's repeat. Qui, who, qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Que, what? But you start the question with it. Que fais-tu? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? And then quoi? You don't start the question and it means, it means what? Tu fais quoi? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? This lesson will just focus on the short thing but quite useful. Les présentations. Okay, so the first thing when you meet someone and you want to know the name of this person, well, that's the common question or the normal question that you will have to use. Comment, so how, vous, appelez-vous. Okay, we've been seeing uh, in unit one, if my memory is correct, the verb s'appeler, so to call oneself. Okay, when you introduce yourself, you use this uh, s'appeler verb. Okay, so that's the reason why it will look this way. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, so, comment vous appelez-vous? So, what's your name? 
How are you calling yourself? If you want a, a direct translation, but it's it sounds a bit strange in English. But then that's the question. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. The other possibility that we've got is to keep the normal order. So vous vous appelez, and then we put this comment thing at the end of the question. Okay. So in that case, remember to raise your voice at the end. Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? Okay. So it is exactly the same question. Okay. It is a bit less formal this second option okay because the first one is the classic option that we've got we start with how and then we change the order we put the subject after the verb okay but then it is more, i mean completely correct to, to to ask a question like that vous vous appelez comment okay and then the other possibility would be quel est votre nom what is your votre nom name what is your name Quel est votre nom? Quel est votre nom? Raise a little bit. Quel est votre nom? Okay, so let's see them one more time. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous vous appelez comment? Quel est votre nom? All right. Uh, in the first example, we've been using this vous form, so the polite form that normally we should use when we meet a person for the first time okay but then let's uh let's be frank that if you're young and uh, if you're meeting other uh, young persons then you can use this uh, to form uh, so the less formal way okay so the question will look like that comment tu t'appelles comment tu t'appelles okay well, then same option that we've got Tu t'appelles comment? So you put this comment at the end, okay? Don't forget to raise your voice because it's a beautiful question here. Tu t'appelles comment? Tu t'appelles comment? And then, quel est ton nom? What is your name? Quel est ton nom? Or other options. So I've been putting this, this option for this uh, tu. Okay, you, the less formal one, and not for for the vous because uh, it is it is quite spoken this uh, this this way. C'est quoi ton nom? Well, if you want to translate it directly, it's what your name. Okay, it looks really or it sounds really strange in English, but still it's possible in French. Uh, it is it is not formal at all, of course. Okay, so uh, don't use that uh, if it's quite important or if uh, the situation is quite formal. Okay. C'est quoi ton nom? C'est quoi ton nom? Okay, and then if you want to, well, present yourself, then remember we're using this appeler, s'appeler, okay, to call oneself, okay? Je m'appelle, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, I call myself Vincent Lefrançois. All right, but then that's the, the, the way we use to present ourself okay other option would be to use not to use this sapley to call oneself but to use to be which is totally possible je suis vincent lefrançois je suis vincent lefrançois i am okay je suis vincent lefrançois and then third option mon nom my name okay mon nom est is mon nom est vincent lefrançois Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. This lesson, we'll see how to conjugate the verbs ending with ER. So not all the ER verbs are belonging to the second group, but some of them and then we'll see how to conjugate them at the present form okay so we'll take an example the example is finir so finir means to finish okay and then you can see that it's ending with er all right so we'll do it like that we'll divide it in two so f-e-n and then we take away this er ending all right and we'll just Keep this form here, F-E-N, to construct the present. So, you take it and you put it here. 
and after that you will add this ending so for je it will be es je fini remember a final s is not pronounced je fini okay tu fini so es as well like we had for je so same way to pronounce it as well you don't pronounce the final s tu fini il elle fini so i t final t not pronounced il elle fini so je fini tu fini il fini phonetically it's exactly the same form for these persons okay so it's quite good if you want only to talk and not to write so just focus on this fini form you know that it's for je tu and il elle okay but then for nous so have a look nous finissons okay e s s o n s ils sont nous finissons finissons okay final s not pronounced nous finissons vous finissez vous finissez okay a z at the end gives you the the sound a okay finissez finissez vous finissez il finis so remember as usual when we get the verbs e and t not pronounced il finis elle finis all right so let's see them one more time je finis tu finis il finit elle finit nous finissons vous finissez il finis elle finis all right let's take another example unir to unite okay same rule we just keep this un and then you spot the ending you take it away and you will keep the un to construct so juni same way tu uni il uni elle uni nous unissons vous unissez ils unissent elles unissent Okay, so it's the same, exactly the same. So, same group, same way to uh, conjugate it. Okay, let's take choisir. Third example, you spot it, ending with er here. Choisir means to to choose. Okay, then same way. Je choisis. Tu choisis. Il choisit. Elle choisit. Nous choisissons. Vous choisissez. Ils choisissent, elles choisissent. 